Growing up, I always had a deep spiritual longing within me. It wasn't until later in life that I discovered the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I joined the church as an openly gay man, and this decision marked the beginning of a remarkable journey of myself, embracing my identity and reconciling it wasn't easy. I faced moments of uncertainty, even doubt, but through prayer, introspection, and seeking guidance, I found strength and, and solace. As I share and highlight the significance of building bridges of love and acceptance within a diverse world. My name is Dennis Schleicher and I'm a convert to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I was asked by general authorities to write a book called, Is He Nuts? Why Would a Gay Man Become a Member of the Church of Jesus Christ? Forwarded by my friend, Al Fox Carraway. I'm also the author of a journal called Scripture Up, Strengthening Your Faith Through God's Message and using affirmations. I was prompted to share this, this video based on a comment I received on YouTube. Quote, I don't think it's about identity. I think it's about pride. It's nothing to do with an immoral, but it has to do with, I, I okay, so this is something that I really, that, that okay, I pondered this, but I want to share it with you again. This was prompted by a comment. I don't think it's about identity. I think it's about hedonism. Pride is nothing, not an immoral hedonistic festival. It's about lifestyle. Speak up on those. So this is my message on speaking up on those. Throughout this video, I want to, um, as I share and highlight the significance of building bridges and love and acceptance in our diverse world, I want to, I will discuss in depth, finding harmony between identity and faith, fostering love and acceptance along with compassion, understanding the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints teachings on homosexuality, challenging misconceptions about pride, events, and lifestyles. And number five, identity and self-worth or worth in general. So welcome to my channel where we share personal stories of experiences that inspire and uplift. In today's video, I will be discussing the topics that are close to my heart. Being an openly gay man in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I want to share my journey of embracing faith while embracing an authentic self. So let me dive right in. First, we're gonna discuss finding harmony when it comes to identity and faith. So also, I would recommend several books. One is called Love Boldly, written by my friend Becky McIntosh. All the links are in the description below. I would also recommend reading Is He Nuts? My memoir and transformative journey into the church because this has softened a lot of hearts. There's over 250 reviews on Amazon, not counting the reviews on Deseret and church owned publishing houses. So many of you wonder if it's possible to be true to oneself and maintain a strong connection with God. I firmly believe that our sexual orientation does not define our worth as individuals or capacity to live a righteous life. The scriptures, like the Bible in the Book of Mormon, provide guidance and comfort in navigating these complexities. In the Book of Mormon, Alma 527 reminds us, have ye walked keeping yourself blameless before God? Can ye look up to God in that day with a pure heart and clean hands? That's something I ask myself daily. Can I look up to God with an open heart or a clean heart and clean hands? The next topic is understanding 
the teachings of homosexuality within the church. And there's a whole section on this on our website. It's essential to understand the teachings of the Church of Jesus Christ in the church regarding homosexuality. While the church recognizes the sacredness of a marriage between a man and a woman, there is a growing emphasis on inclusivity and love for all individuals, including those who identify as LGBTQ+. As we study the Doctrine and Covenants, we find scriptures that emphasize the essential worth of every soul. Section 18.10 teaches, remember the worth of souls is great in the sight of God. That is a powerful message. And I'm gonna share that on our official church website, Come Unto Christ, there is, and there'll also be a link in the description, there is a whole section on same-sex attraction. You can spend months reading and watching those videos by Elder Christofferson, Elder Oaks, members of the First Presidency, Quorum of the Twelve. They all invite us, just like our prophet, Russell M. Nelson, says we need peacemakers in this world. And I'm going to quote him in a little bit. The next topic I'm going to talk about is challenging misconceptions. And let's dive into this. Pride events and lifestyle, lifestyles. Pride events are often misunderstood and some perceive them as solely focused on hedonism or promoting specific lifestyles. However, it's important for us to recognize the diverse range of the experiences and journeys within the LGBT community. Let us not judge, but instead strive to understand and emphasize. Jesus taught in Matthew 7, chapter 7, verse 1 through 2, Judge not that ye not judge, for with what judgment ye judge. Ye shall be judged. That's important. Ye shall be judged. We will be judged. That's... <laughs> And with what measures ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Now, understanding and uh, the misconceptions about pride events and lifestyles, I was one that before I was a member, I was an LGBT advocate. I was the one marching at pride festivals. Now I'm the one marching for Christ, but I understand as I personally don't resonate with going to pride festivals, I respect those who choose to go to pride festivals and pride events. It's not for me anymore. That's my past. And we all have a past, even members. And so I think we need to respect those that choose to participate in pride. But again, this represents my past. Pride events, and diverse lifestyles. So I want to go over um, three key points. And one, address the misconceptions that pride events solely focus on hedonism or specific lifestyles. B, emphasize the importance of recognizing the diverse range of lifestyles within the LGBT plus community. Three, Advocate for understanding and empathy towards various experiences and journeys of the LGBT individuals. So I personally have an issue with all these letters, A, B, C, D, what the heck, because when I came out, you were gay, straight, or bisexual. There was no um, A, B, C, D, E, what the heck, you know, and continuing. But I do understand the importance of fostering change. The car that I drove when I got my license when I was 16 is not the car I'm driving now at 50. And if it was, it would be a pretty good antique. So I think we need to understand that even though it may not be for us, like pride events are not for me, it may be for somebody else and they may need that connection. I'm not saying that I approve of it. 
because I am really adamant that marriage is between a man and a woman. But if somebody chooses to leave and live in a same-sex marriage, who am I to judge? It's to the Savior. He's, our, he's the one that pleads our case to God. So I think we need to find ourselves being more like our Savior, Jesus Christ. So fostering love and acceptance and compassion. So within the, the Latter-day Saint community, there's a growing movement of love, acceptance, and support for LGBTQ plus individuals. I have personally witnessed this in acts of kindness, of acts of kindness and inclusion that have touched my heart. As we emulate the teachings of Christ, we can create an environment where everyone feels welcomed, loved. Let us remember the words of President Russell M. Nelson, who said, we need to listen to and understand what our LGBT brothers and sisters are feeling and experiencing. That right there is a perfect example. And I wanna share my personal experience of finding love and acceptance. When I was a walk-in to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in Connecticut, the sister missionaries were praying for a walk-in and I was at walk-in. I was pounced on by members I was invited by at least six families. Do you want to come to our house for an FHE tomorrow night? And I'm like, sure, what's an FHE? They said, family home evening. And I said, great, but what's a family home evening? And they said, just dinner and fellowship. So I was accepted with open arms. It wasn't until I became a public speaker, speaking, doing zone conferences for mission presidents and doing uh, stake center talks and multi-stake youth devotionals that I started noticing the contention from members. So I think we all need to remember what our prophet says, quote, we need to listen and understand what our LGBT brothers and sisters are feeling and experiencing, close quote. Now I'm gonna talk about identity and worth within the church. And this is important. One, challenge the notion that sexual orientation defines a person's worth or ability to live a righteous life. B, discuss the importance of understanding the importance that one identity is multifaceted and goes beyond sexual orientation. Three, I want to share personal insights in experiencing, providing the harmony between faith, harmony, and ident individual identity. So let's tackle this on firsthand, is the notion that sexual orientation defines a person's worth. Um, I identify as gay, as do many others within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but I am not acting on those, those promptings. I am simply following the same law of chastity that all of my fellow brothers and sisters are following that are single within the gospel. So I am not um, advocating for people to choose what nouns they are or what pronouns they're gonna identify as, but myself, I'm gay. And the reason, that's all I've known my whole life. When I first realized I was gay or different or unique, if you may, I didn't know what the word gay meant. I was in middle school and I had a bunch of students, this was in the 80s, a bunch of classmates were teasing a substitute teacher and they were calling her a lesbian. I went to the head of the special education department, Mary Lee Hickey, in my school and I said, kids are, uh, what's the word lesbian mean? And she goes, why do you ask Dennis? And I said, because kids are, asked, are making fun of the substitute teacher for so-and-so's classroom and calling her lesbian. And she said, Dennis, the word lesbian is identified as two women who love each other and are in a relationship together. And I went, oh. And she goes, just like the word gay is two men. And I went, oh. And then I went, oops. 
I hope she doesn't think I might be gay. Because I was so scared. I was so nervous. I couldn't even admit it to myself. But so you, you add, so I knew this at a very young age, but I still wanted to try to have a traditional marriage. And I just knew the more I ended up studying, the more I ended up going, that wasn't gonna happen. And it wouldn't be fair to my wife or eventually our children and the house with the white picket fence that I always wanted. I used to go through um, Sears and Robux catalogs and I used to cut out patio furniture and pool furniture and, and grills and barbecues and, and backyard swings. And I used to paste them together in a mural because that's what I wanted. So I wanna discuss the importance of understanding one's identity and it goes beyond sexual orientation. If you identify as Christian or a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, if somebody came to you and said, you're no longer allowed to identify as that, you're only allowed to identify as Mormon, what would you say? I would say the prophet instructed us to not refer to ourselves as Mormon. We are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a church with his name on it. And I bear a strong testimony as to why we refer to ourselves with this really long title. Multiple situations. One, I was flying doing a devotional out west somewhere, and I think I was going to California to do a, with Elder Oaks, or was it Elder Gong? I'm sorry, I've done so many of them. And I was flying and I was, my, one of my books was due, and I was writing, um, doing the edits from the acquisitions editor. And I didn't want to talk to anybody. And the guy next to me was a yapper, was a talker. And the spirit said, Dennis, put down your laptop, stop editing, listen to the guy. And he says, what do you do? And I says, oh, I'm a, I'm a um, devotional teacher. Now, had I said just a devotional teacher or had I said anything else, his prayers wouldn't have been answered. I said, I am a devotional teacher and I'm flying, or a devotional speaker, and I'm flying to wherever where I'm speaking to 5,000 single adults, young single adults on um, being a member, a convert to the member, as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And he went and he grabbed my arm and he said, I've been praying and I was praying this morning and I asked God, if somebody mentions a church with your name in it, that's the church I need to look into. That man was baptized six months later. There's no denying the identity and one's identity is goes way beyond their sexual orientation we are all members of the lord's church which is a really long title and by owning that and developing our own testimony we can bring others unto christ now I want to share my personal insights and experiences regarding the harmony between faith and individual identity. The fact that I am not the only person with the word gay on a church owned publisher site is enough why a gay man would become a member of the Church of Jesus Christ. Tom Christoph, Elder Christopherson's brother has a book called May We Be One. A Gay Man's Journey. There are a lot of books that are published by our church with the word gay in it. It doesn't say same-sex attraction. It doesn't say anything else. It says gay. So the church has come a long way. In conclusion, I want to express gratitude for the opportunity to share my experience and encourage further dialogue, please comment and share this 
to your social media pages. Share this to your Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, whatever site you use, because this discussion does need to continue. I want to encourage you to embrace your own authentic selves while nourishing your own faith and relationship with a loving Heavenly Father. A Heavenly Father who gave His Son so that we may have joy. I love the verse in 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 2. And I'll paraphrase. Nevertheless, my son Jacob in the wilderness. You know what? I'm going to pull it up because I think I need to read it verbatim so that way you can um, hear it. Let's see here. Where's uh, chapter two? Here we go. Have it well highlighted, um, actually. But this one isn't highlighted. But uh, Second Nephi chapter two, verse two. Nevertheless, nevertheless, Jacob, my firstborn in the wilderness, thou knowest the great greatness of God, and he shall consecrate thine afflictions for thy gain. And I'm going to add to that. He will consecrate thy afflictions for thy gain, providing we strive to keep the commandments. And I can testify that. And I leave that with you in my testimony in the gospel of Jesus Christ as my testimony gets stronger and stronger. In the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, amen.